steel, the most versatile of all raw materials for fabrication and construction. The basic material upon which 20th century man has built his foundations for the good life. Beginning is here at the United States Steel Fairless Works in eastern Pennsylvania, where two gigantic 200-ton electric furnaces provide a meticulously blended stream of molten steel, specially compounded to meet the precise specifications of the ultimate end product. Molten steel on its way to the most modern advance in steelmaking technology, the continuous caster, providing a better way to produce blooms of the highest possible uniformity. The steel is monitored and tested all along the way, part of a process which represents more than a decade of intensive research and development by U.S. Steel. The ladle rises smoothly up toward the giant Tundish car, which is ready to move into pouring position directly over the two molds. The huge tundish, which serves as a pouring reservoir, encourages the flotation of products of deoxidation and tends to prevent vortexing by the streams pouring into the molds, thus assuring compositional uniformity from the beginning to the end of the heat. The tundish is preheated in preparation for the pour. U.S. Steel's production capacity of strand cast steel exceeds all other producers in the United States. The pouring crew in special heat-resistant suits tap the ladle. Okay, up and around. Okay, heat's opening up. Argon on A. Molten steel enters the mold through two hydraulically activated sliding gate valves. Inside the mold, the steel in contact with the water-cooled mold wall solidifies to form the shell of the casting. Chrome-plated surfaces on the mold assure a smooth finish. The process is constantly monitored by a team of skilled steel makers, backed by banks of computers to assure an accuracy of control unheard of just a few years ago. The bloom, measuring as much as 10 by 23 inches, descends through multiple sets of non-driven guide rolls to a spray chamber where hundreds of water sprays cool the steel on all four sides. The sprays are controlled by the computer system, which considers the casting speed, grade of steel, spray water temperature, and bloom temperature. The spray is regulated in five separate zones to create the desired solidification pattern further assuring good surface and internal quality that pays off in better drawing characteristics and non-porous plating surfaces. The continuous strands pass through a straightener and then to a traveling flame cutter, which cuts the strand into blooms of specified lengths, usually about 26 feet. Strand cast steel has proven to be superior to both rimmed and capped steels in surface quality. Uniformity of chemical composition is an outstanding characteristic of strand cast steel. After cutting, special railroad cars will transfer these blooms to the nearby Fairless Billet Mills, where they'll be reheated and rolled into four-inch billets for conversion into USS Spiracool rods in the ultra-modern Fairless Rod Mill. Before the billets are transferred to the rod mill, those destined for special applications are submitted to fluorescent magnetic particle inspection under ultraviolet light. And are specially conditioned, if necessary, to remove any surface defects revealed. Billets are stored here classified and separated by grade, ready to feed the almost insatiable appetite of the four-strand rod mill. Billets move by chain conveyor up to the charging location. They are pushed into the furnace by the charging car ram.
This roof-fired furnace can handle billets up to 62 feet in length with three individually controlled heat zones. It provides more than ample capacity so there will be no compromise in heating the billets. Monitoring by remote TV, the push-out man has complete control of the furnace. A switch plate guides the hot steel billet into one of the four strand portals or entries in the first rolling stand of the roughing mill. The intermediate mill is also a four strand operating unit. Housings are equipped with roller guides to prevent scratches that might cause rolled in surface defects. After the second stand of the intermediate mill, there are four crop and cobble shears which cut off cold front ends to avoid mill cobbles and imperfections in the rod surface. The mill is now split into two lines, each carrying two strands by these back-to-back 180-degree -back repeaters. These free-flowing loops eliminate tension in the continuous lengths of steel as they become elongated. In straight line mills, the roll speeds must be adjusted to try to compensate for tension which distorts the rod. The rods pass through another set of crop and cobble shears, then through an uplooper. Electronic scanning and circuitry in this unit automatically adjusts loops and rolling speed to eliminate tension between intermediate mills and the finishing mills. Behind these safety lock doors, the rod may be traveling as much as 10,000 feet per minute as it leaves these stands. Finishing mill rolls are set alternately at a 45 degree angle from the horizontal to provide twist-free rolling, aiming at approximately half the present standard dimensional tolerance. The rod is cooled to proper coil laying temperature by high pressure water sprays. This removes some scale and prevents heavy scale formation during subsequent processing. The laying cones deposit the rods on the coil conveyors in overlapping loops. For grades of steel requiring more rapid cooling, the coil conveyor speed can be increased with the loops spaced more widely. Cooling air is blown over and through the rings. Rolled cooling gives the rod a more uniform structure and for some applications can eliminate the need for air patenting. Rod temperatures at the reforming tub will vary between 300 and 700 degrees Fahrenheit compared to 1500 to 1600 degrees in the reels of conventional mills. This gives the reformed coils a certain amount of preset, greatly increasing the payoff ability of the finished rod coils. A transfer cart, called a down-ender, moves the coils onto a power and free type of conveyor which permits inspectors to stop individual coils without stopping the line. Rods travel along the conveyor for further cooling on their way to the final inspection and testing areas. Here, front ends are trimmed and samples taken. These samples are used in metallurgical tests such as verification of grade, upset test, and etch according to the customer's end use requirements. Inspected coils move to one of four horizontal compacting units, which compress the rods into tight, stable coils and automatically band them with three flat bands. The coils leave the conveyor line at two unloading stations in the shipping area ready for transshipment to various USS wire mills or directly to customers who buy rod. Rods destined to become wire are loaded and transported aboard trucks to the nearby ultra-modern new Fairless Wire Mill. This is a cleaning house. Most rods come here before being drawn into wire. The end use of the wire determines the rod treatment. An acid pickling solution takes care of mill scale, 
A water rinse takes care of the acid. A coating of lime, phosphate, or borax neutralizes remaining acid traces. This will also act as a carrier for whatever lubricant is used in the drawing process. The heart of the wire mill is this line of multiple draft wire drawing machines, capable of drawing over 40 miles of 16 gauge high carbon spring wire, pattern laid in a single 2,500 pound continuous coil. It wire sizes from 0.0625 inches through 0.375 inches in low, medium, or high carbon steel. The die is the single most important tool of wire making. Though simple in the extreme, a wire drawing die is one of the most efficient tools of any industry. It consists of a nib of tungsten carbide, or sometimes diamond, whose shape and angles of taper are very important to the gradual reduction of the steel. This is mounted in a steel casing which holds and reinforces it. Though a die has no moving parts and removes none of the metal it handles, it changes the steel in two dimensions, diameter and length, in one operation at the same time improves physical properties, mechanical properties, and finish. As the metal literally flows through the die, the small grains of steel compress and change, elongate, while the wire increases in hardness, stiffness, tensile strength, and elastic limits. When multiple drafts are called for, several dies and blocks can be combined in a single machine. Extensive reduction takes place step by step in a continuous operation. Lubricants ease the passage of the steel through the die. Water flowing continuously through the die chambers helps reduce heat buildup. Forced air also reduces heat buildup. Following the last draft, wire is fed through a dead block and dropped in dead cast rings onto the carrier. All quality control checks take place before packaging and shipping, including tests for mechanical properties, such as tensile strength and elongation. Strand cast steel has resulted in a record low of rejections. Other tests might include checking torsion requirements, or inspections for hardness, size, and finish all aim at careful determination of the wire's fitness for the service required of it. All wire coils are weighed before being prepared for shipping. A generously dimensioned oil dip station furnishes added surface protection for smooth and extra smooth wire finishes according to customer requirements. To further expedite fast delivery, this humidity-controlled shipping room serves as a staging area for finished full-weight coils being ready for shipment to customers. Shipments from any one of the two rail or five truck loading areas. The target is always maximum flexibility and service to the customer. This is really just the beginning. The story continues to the practically limitless variety of end uses and to you, our customer, whose ingenuity and imagination make it all possible.